In this video, we're going to talk about how to create an amortization schedule. So let's say if we're taking out a mortgage or a loan of $300,000, that's going to be our principal amount. And let's say it's a 30 year mortgage. So the term is 30 years. And we're going to say the annual interest rate is 5%. And it's going to start July 1st. 2020. Now in cell D1, this is going to represent the number of payments. Now we're going to be paying the mortgage back every month. And if this is a 30 year term, the number of monthly payments is going to be 30 times 12. So this is going to be equal the value in cell B2, which is 30 years times 12. So we get 360 monthly payments. Now the monthly rate is simply the annual rate divided by 12. So we're going to take the value in cell B3 and then divide it by 12. That gives us the monthly rate. Now to get the monthly mortgage payment, we're going to use the PMT function. Type in equal PMT, open parentheses. Now the rate, this is the monthly rate. So that's going to be cell D2, comma. Now the number of periods, that's basically the number of payments. And that's going to be the information in cell D1. That's 360 payments. The present value of the loan is the principal, which is cell B1. And we're going to add a negative sign to that since it's going to be decreasing over time. And then we'll press comma, zero, close parentheses, and then press enter. So this gives us our monthly mortgage payment of $1,610.46. If we adjust the principal, that value will change. But let's keep this at $300,000. Now the months, this is going to be the first payment. So we'll put one, two for the second payment, three for the third payment. And we could extend it. If you highlight uh, these cells and then click on this button at the bottom right and then drag it, you can extend the data. But We'll start with the first three rows. Now the first payment is going to be on July 1st, 2020. And then it's going to be on the first of each month after that. So the third month is going to be September 1st, 2020. The beginning balance is whatever we see in cell B1. That's the principal. The payment is going to be the information found in cell D3. So we can type in equal D3. The interest is going to be the product of the beginning balance times the monthly interest rate. So we're going to type in equal cell C3 times the value in cell D2. Actually, I take that back. This is supposed to be cell C7, the beginning balance times the value in D2. So that's going to be the interest rate. Now, the payment, the portion of the payment that goes towards the, the principal, that's going to be the difference between the monthly payment, which is found in cell D7, minus the interest payment, which is in E7. So this payment that goes towards the principal is going to decrease the beginning balance by this value. So the end balance is going to be equal cell C7 minus F7. So now let's move on to the second row. The beginning balance in the second row is the end in balance in the first row. So we're going to type in equal cell G7. Now for the payment, we don't want to just extend this because it's not going to look good, even though it's the same. Instead, we're going to type in, instead of typing in equal D3, which we did before, we're going to type in equal dollar sign D dollar sign three. Because now if we extend it, it remains the same. Now the interest that we uh, got in row seven was C7 times D2. For row eight, it's going to be C8 times D2. It's the beginning balance in the second row times the monthly interest rate that we see here. Now the principal is going to be the payment minus the interest. 
So for row 8, it's going to be D8 minus E8. So that's not going to change. For row 7, it's D7 minus E7. Here, D8 minus E8. And then we could just do the next one. This is going to be equal D9 minus E9. But we don't have values for that, so we'll do that later. Now, the end imbalance is going to be the difference between the begin imbalance and the principal. So before it was C7 minus F7. Now it's going to be equal C8 minus F8. Now, moving on to the ninth row or the third month, the begin imbalance in the ninth row is the end imbalance in the eighth row. So that's going to be equal G8. The payment's going to be the same. So let's extend this. And then the interest is going to be the beginning balance, which is in cell C9 times the monthly interest rate, which is found in cell D2. And then the principal, that's going to be the payment D9 minus the interest E9. And then the end in balance, that's going to be the beginning balance, which is C9 minus the portion of the payment that went towards the principal that's found in F9. And so it's good just to check the formulas to make sure they're the same for each row. Now let's highlight the last two rows and let's extend it. Notice that we get an error. The question is why? If we analyze column G, looking at the formulas, they're okay. C10 minus F10, I'm looking at this area, by the way. C11 minus F11, C12 minus F12, C13 minus F13, that column is fine. Looking at column F, it follows the same pattern. D9 minus E9, D10 minus E10, D11 minus E11. The payment column's okay. The beginning balance, G8, G9, G10, G11, G12, that's okay. The problem is with the interest. Notice how the formula changed. C8 times D2, C9 times D2. Here it is, C10 times D4. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to lock cell D2 in order for this to work. So instead of having just D2 here, I'm going to put dollar sign D, dollar sign 2. And then for the next entry, in cell E9, we're going to add dollar sign D, dollar sign 2. Now, let's extend the last two rows. Notice that it's working out. So we're going to go up to, let's see, the first month corresponds to row 7. So we're going to go up to row 366. That went too far. And we can see the last payment is the 360th payment. And notice the end imbalance. It goes to zero. Now let's take the sum of the column of all the payments that we made. So I'm going to scroll up. And I'm going to highlight everything here. So it's equal sum open parentheses D7 colon D366 close parentheses press enter and this is the sum of all the payments that we've made over the course of 30 years. Now let's calculate the total interest paid on this load. So if you type in equal sum and then for the previous column it was D7 to D366 this is going to be E7 colon E366 and then this gives us the total interest. Column F is the difference between the payment and the interest. So this is the, the value of the original loan. This is the principal. The loan was worth $300,000 at the beginning. This is the total interest paid, $279,767 over the course of 30 years. The total, the total payments made, that is the principal plus interest, uh, this is $579,000. So that's how much money you're going to be paying over the course of 30 years. So this is how you can create an amortization schedule.
So now if you adjust the principal, you could see how the monthly mortgage is going to change, the monthly mortgage payment, and how the beginning balance and the end balance will change. Now once you create this amortization schedule, you can play around with it. You can adjust the interest rate of, the, of your loan and see what the new monthly mortgage payment will be. In this case, it's going to be $2,398.20. You can adjust the length of the loan. Let's say instead of a 30-year mortgage, maybe you want a 20-year mortgage. And that's going to affect the monthly payment. If you're going to try to pay off the loan faster, you need to put more money into the loan. You got to increase the mortgage payment to pay off the loan faster. And so it went up from 2300 to 2800 So that's basically it for this video. Now you know how to create an amortization schedule using Excel. Thanks for watching.